Okay, I sort of get what Peter's doing now. I don't have all the pieces yet, but I'm getting, I think, the main drift. So let's go back. This is first Peter at the bottom, verses 1 through 12. And this is Paul's Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 at the top. Peter's wrapping around Paul. He's also showing the third 490 criterion. And if you're not familiar with what I've been doing so far, this is going to be kind of a slog for you. When Paul is doing his 490 accounting here to, to give out the prophetic history of church, which is why Revelation is written the way it is, the scholars don't know any of this, okay? This is all original research, therefore you have to vet it. The content will be the authority, not me. I'm just getting it from the numbers, okay? When Paul's doing his meter, he doesn't use his greeting as part of the meter count, okay? <clears throat> and you really kind of can't use the meter as the greeting as part of the meter count because when Paul's writing Ephesians, it's an encyclical letter. In, so the, the, the actual number of syllables in the greeting is going to be different depending on the recipient. So you can't use his greeting to um, figure out the meter. So you start the meter in Paul, here with Eulogetas, which Peter quotes down here in 1 Peter 3, which is kind of interesting. All right, the versification was something we developed. This was not in the original Bible, but it does break syntactically, so it's a useful device. All right, so one Peter, one Ephesians one three, is a total of fifty six syllables. That's a date line. Paul's telling you he's writing Ephesians in what he calls fifty six A.D. It's his own Anno Domini accounting. He's starting the verse with Christ's birth, okay? God becomes Father at that time. At the end of this sentence, okay, um, our boy, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Augustus dies. And that ends up being what we call 14 AD. So that, that helps you understand some of the differential that's going on here. Although he was named father of his country here. Okay. He was deified, however, at this point. Augustus was deified. So two curios and additional four syllables. I'm sorry. Augustus was named father of his country by this point. He is deified when he dies which is at this point, A.D. 14, okay? So use A.D. When you see 10, think 10 A.D., 20 A.D., etc. In spite of the fact that Paul says he's writing in 56 A.D., I don't know why our B.C. A.D. dates conform. Scholars usually place Ephesians somewhere between 58 and 62, but the fact of the matter is that Paul could have written it in 56, but it wasn't distributed immediately because he was in prison in Jerusalem. Okay, so maybe when he left and went to Rome, it was able to be distributed at that time. But for sure, he's telling us this is when he's writing. So if this conforms to RAD, then he actually wrote it two years earlier than we expect, and maybe it wasn't distributed until you know he was appealed to Rome and went there. That would explain the discrepancy, okay? But that wasn't the main point I want to get to, but it, this is very complicated, I'm sorry. Paul is using 56. Peter not only uses, I'll cover the 84 in a minute. Peter not only uses a direct quote from what Paul says in his first 20 syllables of verse 3, but Peter also makes sure that he uses a 56 in his meter so that the reader can be in no doubt what passage in Paul P 
Peter is tagging to. In other words, what he's telling you by doing this is, hi, the words in my letter are tagging to specific other passages in scripture, <clears throat> and between the words and the meter, you know what they are. This is how they use meter. It is not Bible codes. I'm sorry that the scholars don't know about this. I wouldn't know about it either. If it's a long story how come I do, but I do. All right? So, Peter's telling the readers to start tracking his own timeline to Paul's beginning here. Now, here's the problem. It's not exactly a problem. It's a wraparound. Peter's using his own hello, the greeting part right here. It's an extended greeting, and he's doing it on purpose. It's padded. It's got lots of padded words in it. <clears throat> he's using his own greeting as part of the meter. The meter is 84 years. He's playing specifically to Psalm 90, which he does talk about. He you know, quotes it in words in, in his letters. He's playing specifically to Psalm 90. 84 means decree of God for all of time. That's how Psalm 90 uses it. Psalm 90 verses 1 through 4. Okay, I've already explained that in my Psalm 90 videos. You'll have to watch them to understand what I mean. The 84 is a date line, just as Paul is using 56 as a date line here. Okay, Peter's using the 84 as a date line. He's telling you he's writing 84 years after Herod destroyed the second temple and replaced it with his own. The Jews call that the third temple. Okay, that was done in 18 BC. So Peter is writing 10 years after Paul in 66, okay? He's writing 10 years later. And again, he's using the same AUC system, Roman AUC system, that Paul is using. The Roman AUC system, however, comes in three flavors. And the Roman AUC system we use today is Varro. And Varro pads three years onto his. Okay, so that's part of the reason why we got a three-year variance. It's not strictly due to the ACB, you know, BCAD problem we had with Dionysius, who cut out three years of Augustus' reign. We got another AUC problem. There were three different AUC systems that were debated at the time that Augustus was ruling, and it's a question of which one is Paul using. The one that became official was Varro, and that's what we use today. But I don't know if they're using it because you know they're writing the word of god okay so i don't know if they're like you know obeying convention which is a divine standard that you do that you know or whether they're correcting it okay so that's something i still have to research and i i've been trying for years to figure that out i don't have an answer yet but here's what i do know is that peter's using the same standard as paul so that equates to 66 66 plus 18, so we would call that 66 AD, plus 18 equals 84. So 84 years from the time that Herod redid the temple is when Peter writes. It's key to his letter because he's writing about the temple of church. Okay, and I'll have to explain more of that. This is very complicated, sorry. The 84 is also used when it's used as a dateline it's also used to say 84, in this case, X times 7. That's the other way you triangulate the date. Well, 84 sevens prior to when Peter writes is when Zerubbabel was commanded by God to start rebuilding the temple because they had stopped. And that's in Haggai 2, the whole chapter. It's done, he's saying it on the 25th of Kislev, which would end up being Christ's birth date. So you see the foundation of the temple was laid. So from now on, that's the key phrase in Haggai 2. From now on, I will bless you, meaning if you start rebuilding. So that was what would become Hanukkah, except it was 25 keys left without the designation Hanukkah, back in 522 B.C. Okay, 522, 521, you have to, because it's the end of, it's, it's near the end of the year. So that's why you get that rounding. So Peter is tying to that. So we know for sure that he's looking at 
66 AD, which we may have to call 68 AD. Okay, again, he's using the same AUC system Paul is using. And for some reason, that equates to our BC AD dates. Okay, so we're looking at some kind of self canceling error between the AUC system and the BC AD system that we use. But I can't figure out, I can't prove it yet. All right, so just call this 66 AD or you're going to get confused. All right, that's 84 syllables. That's his greeting. All right, so what he does next, and I'm sorry this is so complicated, he develops a bifurcated timeline. First, on the right hand side, he's tracking the paw. So all the syllables we're going to see in Paul, this is on the right hand side. Okay, the same thing that Daniel did when he wrote Daniel 9. Actually spoke it out loud, that's how smart he was. And then Peter is also tracking from his own time forward in real time. Okay, to tell the message. You're supposed to know that the years that are in view here, the text that applies is applying one syllable per year. So he's basically summarizing the last 84 years when he writes all this, okay? He's not only saying what you see in the text in translation or even in the Greek. He's summarizing the time. That's the important thing to understand. All right, so since he's summarizing the time and since he's using two timelines, he's now wrapping around Paul so that when Paul is writing in 56 AD, Peter's now punching that up 56 years ahead of when he writes to 122 AD, which because of the 56 is now also tracking to Paul's 140 AD. Now, when Peter's doing this, he's also tracking to another convention Paul uses, which is to make the four quarters of church the year of church. He's playing on Noah's year in the boat. Daniel 9 had done the same thing. So Peter's doing the same thing. But first, he has to kick off the 56. The 56 is outside the four quarters of church. That's why Peter's doing it. See, we got the four quarters of church first quarter here adds up to a 91 using these segments, which depict believer growth. Really high believer growth here, period of testing, but believers still grow here, high believer growth here, and another high, higher period of growth here, and a double period of testing between 140 and 147. The reason why that's true, as you find out in later history after Paul writes, is you got the Bar Kokhba rebellion and the building of a pig temple, replacing Herod's third temple. Okay, it was already destroyed in 70 AD, but there were remnants. It was completely razed, and a whole new city, Jerusalem, was destroyed by 140 AD. And that matters a great deal, because in 140 AD, the Jews were no longer even permitted in Jerusalem. So the point is, is that Peter, playing on his keyword diaspora here, is giving you a map of when to leave the Roman Empire. That's what he's doing. Because this is a temple building 490. Paul did the historical 490, okay, which was always true since Adam, all right? And he's also doing a historical building about the likelihood of the rapture in each one of these scenarios. What if the rapture occurs in 77 AD? What if it occurs in 84 AD? This is the character of the time for that period. And Peter's following that convention, except he's not talking about likelihood of the rapture. You already got that from Paul. He's talking about whether the temple 490 will continue. In other words, there was a temple 490 in Daniel 9. In addition to the other two 490s about growing up in Christ, and the historical deadlines for God to grant time on a 490 year basis. I've been documenting that now for 10 years and if it's coming to you out of the blue I'm going to have to ask you to just look at <clears throat> my time section on my channel page God orchestrates time all the videos and the word docs and everything related to this doctrine that nobody in Christendom knows all of them are in that section okay and all of the, the links 
are also in the Ephesians 1 Read Parse Doc, which will be in this video's description. Okay, so you could just read pages 4 and 5 of Ephesians 1 Read Parse Doc and get acquainted with what this doctrine is. It's all over the Bible, starting in Genesis. It's extensive, and nobody in Christendom knows it, so I've had to document it directly from the Bible, and then hopefully somebody with authority will vet it, you know, before or after I'm dead. I don't care. My job is to document it until I die. So, 140 years, divisible by 7, is when the temple not only has gone down already, but the whole city of Jerusalem goes down. That's the same window as between 586 and 446 BC, which a whole lot of scholars get all confused about because they think that there was supposed to be a human king designating this period. No, it was God in Daniel 9.24. He's the king who made the decree, and he made it back in 586 in Jeremiah 25, which Daniel was reading, which prompted him to pray in Daniel 9.2, as he says. Okay? <clears throat> So 140 years, so you've got between 122, okay, and that's during the time of Hadrian. Hadrian started becoming anti-Semitic, or, you know, just have trouble with the Jews in 122, and then he, he got, it got so bad that he just raised Jerusalem. But he died a couple of years before Aeolia Capitolina finished being completed. That's what Paul's referencing here. The Bar Kokhba rebellion was what kind of culminated in this problem. Okay? So Peter is talking to that. He's, he's treating this as an exit window, as a diaspora window to get out. And what he's telling you by 56 is that it's going to be, you know, a time of testing vote short. The last 14 years or not are in abeyance. Which, of course, is what Paul's also saying during the same time. That's why this 14 is there. Okay, so Peter's tracking to Paul. So Paul makes a 91 at this point. But Peter doesn't. Okay, he leaves that 56 out because Paul left it out. So you're, both, you're tracking to Paul's later use of it here at the same time that, that you're tracking to the 56 being left out of the 91. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like an anacoluthan. All right, there's more to it, but I'm trying to keep this simple. So then Peter does his own 91, tracking to Paul's second 91. The first one is done. first one is done by the time Paul gets to 147. Okay, Peter truncates seven years from that. He's poignantly telling you that Herod's temple is going down imminently when he does that. Because Paul had already tracked it up here. Paul had already tracked temple go down during this time. Peter's writing during this time. So he leaves the seven years out. Okay, it's it's a symbolic thing. Alright. So Peter starts so the second ninety one in Paul starts with one forty eight. Okay. And Peter just sort of lumps that together because this is covering one forty to one fifty one AD. Alright? So when Paul, it's 28 and then 63. See, he's got 63 here and 28 up here. So that makes 91. See? Peter reverses the order on purpose. He's making the 63 here and he's making the 28 here. And he's still keeping 7 short because in Paul's meter, that's 238. And in Peter, it's 231. And, it, and it's a pregnant thing for him to do because in 231, this was when the Severan persecution began. Um, it's a long story about how I covered this already in the Paul thing. Um, the, what was a new, the first time the word Catholic was used was during this time right here. Okay, It was pitched to the Severan mothers. That's why Paul's using Musterion. It's as if the, the, the Roman Empire is pregnant with their power behind the throne. And Origen went there, and Hippolytus went there, and Julius Africanus, and a guy named Demetrius of Alexandria, who was trying to defeat Origen's influence over the Severans. They're all fighting. 
And because they're all fighting, finally the power factions get sick of the mothers and say, enough. And so the guy who was the cleric in Rome gets ousted, gets killed. Hippolytus gets banished from the court. Um, and uh, Julius Africanus is out. And Demetrius of Alexandria gets to have his, you know, vengeance on Origen. All of this is in a book called Bishop's Lists. It was a dissertation by a guy named Stephen Williams. You can buy the book at Amazon for $99. And I covered it in my Pope Myth videos, um, the videos on Bishop's Lists, where I review the book. I, I got specific permission to be able to show that in video from the publisher of the Bishop List book. I got explicit email you know, permission. So that's what I did. Now, Peter, therefore, is cutting it off at where the persecution begins because you want to get out of Dodge, get out of the Roman Empire. It's turning apostate with the whole Catholicism thing getting started during that time. By the way, this is the first time that Peter gets put on a pope list. Peter was never declared to be a pope until this time. Okay, so that's why, you know, this is such a bad time in history. And Peter, like Paul, is saying, get out of Dodge. And he truncates it at 231, which is when the pogrom begins. And then Severus Alexander himself, who was sort of worshiping Jesus and Moses, he gets killed in 235. Okay, so he gets killed right here. All right, now whether Severus Alexander was a believer in Christ, I really don't know. But he had little lares, little, little stone statues that he worshiped. Okay, he was sort of an eclectic guy. Um, and then he gets killed in 235. So Peter's saying, get out before 231 even happens. See, this is like a little timeline which you pass on to your kids to tell them, hi, if you're living between 213 and 231, okay, because it's measured from Christ's birth, get out of Dodge. Okay, don't even stay there because there's going to be a persecution. So that's diaspora. Again, there's a diaspora going to go on here, okay? And that was when the Severans came into power because there was all this, you know, fighting between the emperor would-be emperors because there were like four or five of them during this time. And then get out of Dodge again once the Severan, you know, the, the, the so-called Catholics start to take over because that's the apostasy and you want to get out. You don't want to be part of it. Your Bible's threatened, your spiritual life is threatened, everything's threatened, get out. See, that's because it's in orange. That's how you know. And he's doing the reverse order of Paul. So that's his 91, tying to Paul's second quarter, which is right up here. See, that's Paul's second quarter of church. Okay? So I'll come back in the next increment because I'm worried that my uh, computer's going to die. And we'll go through the rest of it.